Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to another quick video on uh, TradingView itself. Uh, this one's going to just focus on how I uh, set up my TradingView, what's my customizations, what's my settings, and uh, what, how do I set up my uh, drawing panel, watch this, etc. Okay, so let's get started with this one. Uh, many of you guys have asked me, you want to kind of do the same customization as I do. Uh, certainly you can share kind of what I do, and then you can obviously kind of uh, go over it and uh, 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 change it according to what you like. So let's start with kind of the front uh, you know, profile page here. This is um, your personal profile page. So click on the chart here. Uh, usually you should already have a chart that you're working. If you don't, there's probably an option here to add a chart. So let's say we go to main chart, which is main chart here as an example. On the top right here where it says main chart, you can create new chart layout. So let's just click you create a new chart layout, right? So it'll give you a new kind of default page of the charts. And then what you can do is um, rename it. So here it says on name. So make sure you rename it to something. Uh, usually I would do is I keep my main page and back testing page separate. This is because on my main page, uh, I will have different drawings. I will have the lines in already, but on my back testing page, um, I'm allowed to draw whatever I want and I can remove them accordingly and so and so. Okay, so now I have my backtesting page. Um, make sure I want to set all my uh, my set it to a candlestick formation, right? This is because uh, candlestick is good to use. It's uh, I like the candlestick formation. It's not a must to be something to add it to your trade, but it's an added confluence, meaning that if I'm taking a lot, if I'm taking the buy position, uh, it would be nice to see some reversal candlesticks. Right to add it to the overall price condition of the move. Okay, so set it to candlesticks. That will help you uh, identify a little bit of more edge in the market when it comes to analysis and time frame. So if you look at the top left here, there's a bunch of time frames here. You do the drop down. There's you know different times. So I would always do the day, week, month as a higher time frame, and then you can see four hour, two hour, one hour, and all the minutes as a lower time frame. So make sure you favor these, right? If you favor these, you can see on the top left, there's more and it pops out. So it's just easier for, you know, when you go through the market like this, you can see different time frames like so. So speaking of time frames, let's talk about the screens. If you click top right here, you see there's a select layout. Um, I personally like it to just have two. There's multiple more. I really don't see the need of all those. I just keep it simple as two. So what I do is on the bottom here, I like to keep it as a higher time frame, so daily weekly or monthly. On the top, I only focus on lower time frame, so you know, one hour, two hour, etc. This is because um, when it comes to drawing, if you click that um, select layout again, you're allowed to sync some of these stuff. So you sync, what I do is I'll sync the symbol and crosshair. That means if I go to different pairs, they're moved together, so I don't have to change them into uh, one by one. Also, uh, in terms of sync of drawing, I think that's kind of up to you and up to your uh, style. I personally don't sync the drawing because I like to keep the drawing on a higher time frame separate to the drawings on the lower time frame. You can see that I just drew something on the higher time frame. Uh, it's not showing up here on the lower time frame, just like if I drew something on the lower time frame, it doesn't show up on the higher time frame. This is because sometimes if you notice on my streams, um, if you notice I'm on, when I'm on my ch on one chart, I'll talk about, let's say, higher time frame, whatever, and I'll quickly just press tab, and I go to the lower time frame. So the drawings doesn't sync, so it's not too messy, it's not too cluster. Uh, I like to keep it very neat and tidy. Okay, so that's kind of how I do on specific on charting. I think these kind of breaks down most of the things I want to do. So let's go to settings and customizations here. Okay, so let's just use this as an example. Uh, when you open a new chart layout like what I did in the beginning, you'll see kind of a default page of what TradingView does. So certainly you can customize that to your liking, right? So if you right click here, uh, first thing I would probably suggest is this color thing here. You can change it to light, uh, you can change it to dark. I personally change it to dark so everything is darker and at nighttime it doesn't hurt your eyes as much. So I prefer darker themes. And then, you know, you can search customization of your uh, layout. You can save them accordingly. There's a few that I, I have. I personally just use the current one. So if you notice the one that I have here, um, the ones that I use on my main chart, um, you can, you know, duplicate that to here. If I just click template for this is the one that I save. That will jump to that. Okay. So how to customization and save it. So go to setting here and you can see there's a bunch of, a uh, bunch of uh, information here that you can change. 
So symbol here, you know, you can change the candlestick color, uh, border, and things like that. You can play around with it, see what you like uh, in terms of color, whatever you like. So change them accordingly. And then uh, status line, I, don't, I try not to have too much. If, if you look into the top left, some people, there's a bunch of numbers. If you haven't, you know, remove them, I usually just remove all them. Those numbers are not applicable to me in my trading. So I remove all them. But the symbol is definitely needed because you can see what you're looking at. Uh, scale, uh, not too much. I remove all these indicators or whatever thing level. I just make sure there's no overlapping limit. Uh, and then uh, countdown to bar close, that's up to you. Uh, I usually don't have that. And then currency, sometimes you'll see currency on the top right. You can see that. Uh, I don't have that either. So just no overlapping. And then symbols last price is important because it shows you what the current price is at the current time. Uh, appearance, again, Background, you're so many customization, you know how people on trading view start customizing their background now. So it's up to you what you want to do to it. Um, I personally try to keep it dark now. I think a lot of you give me a feedback on the darker uh, background works. So I'm going to keep it as so. And these grid lines that you see, uh, I usually don't have them. I just pretty much make it all to zero. Uh, you can just drag this to all the way to zero so it removes all that. I don't really need all those grid lines. Um, in there it kind of uh, creates a little bit more confusion and then if you look at scale text here uh, you can change the scale text you know make it bigger smaller uh, it's up to you of course and then crosshair right crosshair is important uh, make sure that it's not the same color as your background so you can see a little bit more clearly right if it's red up here it's good but if you make it like black or gray, it's harder to see. You almost don't see it, right? So make sure it has some sort of contract, contrast. Sorry, And the margin, um, I usually try to keep it as default. Uh, that doesn't really affect me too, too much. And trading, uh, if you sync your trading broker, if you have Oenda or FXCM or whatever, that trading view allows you, you can do this. Uh, I personally use Oenda, but I don't even do this personally. Uh, I think it's preference again, but... I think one less people to know your trading uh, broker password information, username, login, and things like that, uh, the better it is, in my opinion. So uh, I personally don't uh, sync my broker with that. And event is not too relevant. I usually don't show these news events and stuff like that. I don't want it to be clustered. So apply to all, and then you can you know save as a layout. Let's say you save whatever it is. And then now that if you need to uh, always go to that, go to that layout, the other color theme, you see there's a test. So that's exactly what you just created. Um, you know, if there's any indicators or anything like that, and on the default, I usually just remove them as well. So keep my chart very clean as so. Okay, so that is uh, in terms of setting customizations. Let's go into uh, drawing panels, okay? So if you go to the top left here, if you haven't, there's this hamburger looking thing. Uh, make sure your join panel is out. So there's a bunch of join panels here that might be a little bit overwhelming. But if you notice um, where I have my favorite, this is my favorite join panel. There's only a few of them. Let's go through what I have in them. Okay, so I'll open up all every single one of them. I'll give you guys an example of what they are and what I do to them and how to uh, bring them up. Okay. So there's a bunch of drawing tools I just created. Uh, well, the, the ones are, these are really the basic or essential needs you do. You don't need to have like a cluster, a long, big of favorite panels. So you certainly do need these two, uh, which is the, uh, the long position and short position. And kind of this is how you calculate a buy or a sell. Uh, you can adjust these. You can, you can go to the settings. You can adjust these numbers so it matches exactly, right? This is important for you to journal down your trades, uh, look for, uh, management of your trade, etc. Okay. Uh, another thing I have is this vertical line. Uh, you can have it, you cannot, it's up to you. This is how I'm able to, when I do some coaching, when I do some backtesting, uh, this is how I distinguish. Let's say I want to backtest this period of the time and then I'll replay to that time so that, that I can see the range very, uh, very clearly when, I, when I'm backtesting or I'm explaining something like that. Um, this is a ray line. This is how I distinguish like a previous double top or double bottom. It's not like that resistant line people have going all the way back or whatever. I just have a ray line. So it starts with a point and it continue going to the right. So that's kind of how I do it uh, in terms of when I kind of list out the double top or bottom. Uh, trend lines is pretty simple as this. We all know trend lines. Most of us all use it. So 
Try not that so. And I use an arrow. This is how I point out if I, uh, what I'm trying to point out on my charts or analysis. If I'm going to uh, looking at a long position or I'm looking at a short position, that's kind of what I use. Uh, a call box. This is where I type out a bunch of things when I in my analysis. This is how I can easily point out certain things. And you have this kind of a profit, not profit, sorry, um, range data and price range. So it gives you a range, a time of this range, and it also gives you the movement of the range. So this is very good to calculate time and calculate your profit or uh, the move of a uh, certain move that has happened. It gives you a pip breakdown percentage and date as well. And last thing I use is obviously brush. This is the main thing I do when I do on my streams. I circle, I draw, and I can easily uh, remove it as I go. Okay, so where are they on the drawing panel? So that you can favor, let's go take a look. So on the left here on the drawing panel, uh, second one here, trend lines, horizontal ray line, vertical line, arrow. Just make sure you favor them. See, as you favor, your favorite box becomes more. So favor these, right? And then go to the next one here. Nothing here. These are all kind of more advanced charting, things like that. Fib retracement, things like that, that people use. Um, brush, brush is the one that I use. Uh, there are certain other things that you can use, let's say highlighter or whatever. Um, really, it's just up to you what you want to use. I usually just use brush. And then if you come to go down here, there's a call out, a call out selection. You use balloon, you can use the other things here. Uh, again, up to your discretion. And these are more that those like uh, harmony patterns and things like that, or alleyway wave. I don't really use those. And here is the long position, short position, data and price range. And bar pattern, yeah. Oh, bar pattern, I didn't go over. Let's take a look. This is also something that I use uh, periodically. So if you click bar pattern, if you click one point and another, it gives you that breakdown of this. You see how this section here kind of just made it down. And this is good for me when I do coachings or when I explain certain things, uh, I can do that. Or if you want to do a forecast, right, you can kind of do this. So you have a range now, and then you can make a forecast on the bottom without putting it on the actual charts. Okay, so uh, that's, uh, that is forecast. Forecast is in the same sections as where you would found uh, long and short positions. Okay, and that's really it. I don't use anything else here. I don't really use anything below. Uh, I keep it very simple and neat. I don't need to have a long list of favorite drawing panels. That is all I need. And one more thing I want to go over on the here is just certain things you can use. Uh, hide all drawing tools. Let's say you want to just go back to the clean charts and we'll just hide all your drawing tools, not remove them, but just temporarily hide them as you can see the lines here and remove. And if you want to remove all your drawings in one go instead of just clicking one, uh, right here there is a kind of a recycle, uh, recycle box. All you do is remove join and remove everything like that. Okay, so that's drawing panel. Last thing I want to go over is watch list. So on the top right here, you can see that there's watch list. I break down my watch list very, very, uh, very neat and things like that. And people are asking how you do that. Well, very simple. You click on the top right drop box, create new list. That's all you have to do. So let's say you're creating a new list and you're talking about Forex as an example, and there's nothing here. So all you have to do is click this plus sign. You just start clicking in all the pairs uh, that you're trying to add in, right? You see how I'm just adding in random things. Uh, um, you just continue add it until you have a full list. And if you want to have different lists, you know, add, create a new list again, right? Create a new list again. If you want to go uh, crypto, for example, um, and create a crypto and then add crypto accordingly, right? And this is how I have different kind of, uh, you notice that there's so many different uh, uh, watch list kind of drop box because that's kind of how I like to distinguish uh, all the different kind of markets, right? You see how I distinguish them in its market itself. So I have commodities, cryptocurrency, equity indices, so I can quickly jump through them and uh, look at the ones accordingly. And you can see that I also take advantage of the flag that TradingView offers. If you notice on any of the symbols that you start having in your watch list, you can right click them, you know, there's a few colors, or if you left, left click them, you can go through the color right away. Again, this is easy for you to distinguish what are your, what are your watch list, what is like more primary, what is secondary and what is more important, things like that, right? So if you notice here, uh, I, I categorize them in different color. I have focus, I have primary, secondary, request, post. Of course, that goes based on who you are and what you want to do with these. 
you certainly don't have to follow me in terms of these names and color, but you should take advantage of them because it's easy to, when you have a bunch of things, these are going to stand out, right? Because they're flagged, so it's going to stand out. If I have something that's in red, it's going to stand out the most out of the other colors, right? So that's why I do the flag, and it's easy for me to go through them when I do my streams, when I talk about things, I know right away what I'm talking about when I click through them uh, as an example. Uh, another thing I want to go over, which is the last thing, is alerts. Uh, some of you guys asked me about alerts. Uh, I personally don't need to set so many alerts. Someone asked me, um, how come you don't set much alerts? Well, I don't really need to. I already know what I'm looking at. I know what uh, what what is primary, what secondary. I already know what I'm looking at. So oh, I'm only going to set alert when it's kind of like a high probability, when the trade is about to be executed or it's about to uh, complete a correction. So I will set the alert accordingly. Other than that, I really don't set alerts because uh, I don't want to have a bunch of alerts on my phones or on TradingView every time when when an alert hits. So alerts, very simple, like you guys don't know, right click on any set alert. Uh, you can adjust the time, you can adjust the settings here, whatever, uh, up to you, of course. And then once you set the alert, you'll see that red line and you on the, on the right here, you'll see alert here, right? You can adjust this accordingly. And, like, and I try not to have too many, like I mentioned, so that, uh, it's keeping it clean, so you're not always kind of looking back at your charts, trying to look for opportunities. Does the alert here? Does the alert the not here? Uh, keep it simple, guys. Right? If you're looking for a um, a buy position, just set the alert above it so that you will come back and check it uh, whenever that hits. Okay, everyone. So I think that breaks down uh, most of the questions that people ask me about on TradingView in terms of settings, in terms of customizations. I think mostly is about chart, how you set your chart up and you know color appearances things like that uh at drawing panels etc as well so i think i went over all that in this video uh but if you miss anything if i miss anything uh feel free to let me know below and i can uh look into that and give you more detail of that all right guys so thank you very much for tuning to this video and i hope you uh learned something from this and uh, catch you guys next time all right thank you very much